Hey YouTube, it's your boy Widgie here, coming at you with some more Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition with the Haudna Shone Beginner's Guide. Yes, I've done quite a few of these beginner guides on my channel now, so if you do want to go check those out, please feel free to. But today we are showcasing the Iroquois, also known as the Haudna Shone. So, without further ado, we are going to be breaking this video down into three parts, as we always do. First part is going to be looking at the overview, the features, unique buildings and units of the Sith, and then the second Second is going to be looking at a 1v1 land and water deck and the final third thing that we're going to be doing is actually showcasing a game and we're going to be seeing it in action uh, of a sort of a standard sort of build order that you can go as the Haudna Shone. So I hope you guys really enjoy it so without further ado let's jump into the first which is the unique units features and buildings. Okay guys, looking at the unique features first, we have a Trevoir, which is a unit that can build a majority of buildings for free. You start with the Trevoir with your villagers, and you can also get Trevoirs depending on what kind of age up you go and stuff like that. So very interesting, very, very crucial for the civilization. Moving on, we have the War Chief Aura, which increases the hit points of nearby friendly units, and this actually increases it by 10%. I believe so very very crucial um, for rushing for pressurizing it's really really good that you do not lose your war chief because it's very very important for the sieve and you can see here starts with the travoir and all trading post sites are visible that's what I just mentioned the training posting is kind of interesting I didn't know about that so that's really really helpful for newer players as well trying to find where the trading posts are or if there are actually any trading posts on the map at all so cannot gather coin by mining. Yes, you have to build a tribal marketplace, which is a building that can sort of have a maximum of 10 villagers assigned to it to gather coin. And you do actually gather coin a lot faster as the Haudna Shone. So that's something crucial as well to bear in mind. And you can also build the community plaza, which used to be called the fire pit in the old uh, legacy version. And this sort of is very similar to the other native sieves. You can use it to do certain dances and ceremonies to boost certain things um, for your civilization. And the final thing is choose a tribal council member to advance in age. And that's sort of like when you choose your politician for the European sieves, you choose a tribal council and it can give you certain things. And we'll, we'll look at that a little bit later. Moving on to the unique units, we have the war chief that I've just mentioned, a villager, a travoir that I've just mentioned, a warrior, a healer. The healer units uh, is quite interesting because you can get healers that can boost the community plaza rate as well. So very similar to warrior priests for the Aztec, you can get these healers that can also uh, provide a bonus to your community plaza. You have the Aenas, which is a bowman, uh, the Tomahawk unit. This is quite crucial. So the Aenas and the Tomahawks are quite crucial units. The Tomahawk, sort of treat that as like a musketeer heavy infantry unit. Very good at cavalry and at taking down buildings and just a general sort of good infantry unit. The Aena, which is the bowman, as I say, treat that as sort of like a skirmisher unit, an early age two skirmisher unit. And of course, we move on to a very, very crucial um unit here which is the forest prowler now the forest prowler is pretty much i would say the strongest skirmisher in the game very very good got a great shooting animation which means that you can really micro them quite well and uh, they've got a very high fire rate and good ranged resist and also you can stealth them in certain scenarios as well i rarely do stealth but it's something that you can you can do with them Moving on to the Kanya Horseman, um, just sort of light cavalry uh, armed with hand weapons. So you could sort of treat the Kanya Horseman like Hussars. Um, they're good at raiding vills and taking down skirmisher units and artillery. The Musket Rider, uh, that's an age three unit, good against other cavalry, so an anti-cav unit. And it's also good at artillery. If you have them in a, in a sort of a, a larger mass, they're good at taking down artillery units. Um, a ram is your age two siege unit, which is kind of interesting. I think age two. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, age three, I believe. Age three siege unit there. Uh, I rarely use that. The mantlet I rarely use as well. The light cannon is pretty much one of the best artillery pieces in the game. It can sort of act as a culverin and a falconet combined. So it's got an insane speed, it's got really good range, and it's great at taking down other artillery. Um, it's great at taking down infantry, buildings, really, really good. And if you want to go into age four, there's a car that you can get where you get four of those light cannons and it can be really beneficial. And looking at the ships, we've got a canoe and a war canoe. Nice and easy. 
So just looking quickly at the unique buildings then, we've got a long house, which is the uh, the house version uh, of uh, for the Hoden Shone, and it gives you 15 population, and I believe it's 135 wood. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The uh, let's have a quick look. Actually, is it is it 135 wood? It's 125 wood. 125 wood. Okay. You then got the farm, tribal marketplace, which I've mentioned, the community plaza I've mentioned, the war huts. That is your barracks type unit, and it does shoot as well. So it actually has some sort of ranged attack, very similar to the blockhouse and other war hut styled buildings for the natives. The corral, which is the stables and the siege workshop. And you've got two unique ceremonies here that you can do. You can increase population and you can also spawn travois, which is kind of interesting. So there we go, guys. That is the first part, looking at the unique units, buildings and features of the Civ. We're going to move into part number two. We're going to be having a look at some 1v1 decks. Right, guys, you join me on AOE3 looking at the decks, the 1v1 land we're going to kick off with first. So we're going to run through age one, two and three, and we're just going to sort of give a quick overview of these. We're not going to go into too much depth about the strategy and what to pick first and stuff like that. We'll do that in part three. So let's have a look. So we've got the three Vill card, kind of crucial there for age one. Age two, uh, what I suggest with age two is that you have, you know, three resource items, uh, either three or four unit shipments, a couple of upgrades and the five Vills. That's what I su would suggest that you go for. And this is kind of crucial because the way that you want to play Howd is there's sort of two sort of openings that you want to do, potentially three, depending on the map and also depending on the opponent. But we'll touch upon that in the, in part three uh, a little bit later. And moving on to age three, you can see majority here is Forest Prowlers and Canya Horsemen. The reason that we've got a lot of Canya Horsemen is just because of macro element. OK, so Canya Horsemen cost food and wood. And the majority of the other infantry that we're going to be going for will be food and gold. So that will be your forest prowlers and it will be your musket riders. They are food and gold. So it's best to have a lot of the Kanya horsemen because it just makes your life a bit easier with macroing uh, the minute you get up into age three. Same with when you get up into age two as well. Going for the Kanya horsemen early is good because it allows you to scout and also to raid as well. Also, you can see here, got two unit upgrades, just like age two. So just have nice to have a couple of unit upgrades here, which is nice. And obviously a big chunky resource crate. And looking finally at age four here, as I mentioned at the start, the four light cannons is crucial. A great, great card if you're going for fast industrial or if you're going for an early age up. This can be really, really good to push. And of course, we've got a strong Tomahawk shipment and an infinite resource crate if it gets into the really sort of late game. This can be really crucial as well. Okay. So that's just an overview of the 1v1 land. And looking at 1v1 water here, if I just quickly switch between the two, there isn't a great deal of change. Now, something that actually I forgot to mention here is the uh, is the Renegade French. This is a crucial card here. This is sort of the linchpin of your age three sort of movement, you know, moving out and attacking. This is the sort of the linchpin for that. It's the thing that you sort of need. And... 500 coin is very, very good value. Five Renegade French, uh, which is basically the Curaçaos. You get five Curaçaos for 500 gold. Now, if you know how much Curaçaos are with the French, they are very expensive. For 500 gold, that is a great price. So I really recommend going for, for this, uh, this card right here. Okay, moving on to the 1v1 water. You can see nothing much really changes apart from a couple of boats, like one boat shipment here. And you have the water ceremony here changed instead of the uh, exotic hardwoods. And also you can see that we have a eco card here, the ag agrarian ways, which means your farm and estates uh, upgrades are available before the imperial age. So they're actually all free. So you can do all of these uh, ceremonies and all, all the upgrades are completely free. But everything else here is pretty, pretty standard. Exactly the same really as, as what I just showed you in the 1v1 land. So there we go, guys. That's pretty much it. Let's move on to part three where I show you this in action and give you some sort of hints, uh, some suggestions of what you should do depending on the map and the matchup. Right, guys, welcome to part three where I'm going to be showcasing a run through of a build order. You could call it a standard build order for the Howard and Ashone. So without further ado, let's do this. So you are going to hear myself. Toxic semi-FF. 
Yep, so you're going to hear myself in the background, but I am going to turn that down just a little bit there so it's not too loud. And yeah, we're going to just be looking at one sort of variation that you guys can use when playing as the Howd. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down it into three variations. Okay, so the first, which I'm going to be showcasing to you guys here, is the Age 2 Rush. Okay, so this is a very, very powerful rush that the Howd can do. And I think it's very sort of... Um, it's an underdog sieve, you know, they're not used that much in the sort of lower elo bracket, uh, beginner sort of area. You don't really see them playing that much. So this can definitely sort of catch, uh, catch and sort of really screw over your opponents. So um, it's quite unorthodox. So I hope you guys enjoy this. So without further ado, let's get straight into this. So first thing you're going to be doing is you're going to be using your travois that you have there to do some sort of basic scouting around your TC. That's the first thing you're going to do. And you're going to be using your explorer to go around and hunt for treasure. Main thing that you're going to be wanting to look for is food and secondary is wood. So food's going to help you age up a lot quicker. And the wood is going to help you get your TP down a lot earlier. So as you can see there, I had five vills chopping wood and I had one vill going out to herd the huntables to make sure that we can get them as close to the TC as possible. And we really want to prioritize getting wood so we can get that TP down as soon as possible. Now, obviously, there's going to be a situation where you may not have a TP. There it may be a no TP map. And if that is the case, um, then yeah, just, just ignore this uh, bit here. I'm just doing a, a bet on the stream to see if I'm going to win the game. But yeah, so if you don't have a TP, then still just carry on doing what you're doing, but obviously don't chop for the wood. And uh, there is an option that you can build a market, but it's probably not the best idea to do that. So what you can do is just go ahead and put a longhouse down with your travois, which I've done there uh, just north of my TC. Now there is a other kind of variant that you can do if you don't have a TP but you have water is what you can do is you can chop continuously to get four fishing boats. Now what you do is you use your travois that you have at the start and you use that to build a dock. Then you just continuously chop wood until you can make four fishing boats. When you've done that then you make sure that you chop enough for a long house which is your house and you build that and then you move all your villagers onto food. And that's it. You don't do any more with the dock. You just leave the four fishing boats there. You make sure that they're obviously fishing for food, not for gold. And that will just help you in the long term with your economy when you're rushing. Okay. So there's quite a few variations. I'd say there's three variations in total for the Howd. And for the beginner, I suggest just trying to do a solid sort of rush that has some eco behind it. So you can see here that I'm just herding my Huntables, making sure to get them close to the TC. And I've got all my veals on food here and we're looking like we're ready to age up. And we're going to be selecting our, uh, what's it called, tribal council or our politician. Okay. So we are playing against a Spanish opponent here. And of course, it does also depend on your... I'm just going to pause it right there. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be going for the messenger when you get into age two and that's going to allow you to age up fast and also provide you with another another travois and the travois will obviously be able to build a building for free and we want to use the travois to move out to a forward position which means you know probably in the um the second half of the map so where the opponent is you want to build it in that half of the map and um you want to get that out there as soon as you can and get that building so that's what we're going to go for and this is going to be a fast age up and as I do the age up, you can see here that I'm moving villagers. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be transferring around half of the villagers onto wood. Now, the reason that I'm doing that is because the units that we're going to be making are going to be food and wood. So we are going to be macroing for food and wood. And also you're going to need wood to build extra longhouses as well. So that's the first thing that you kind of want to think about when you're chopping your wood. You want to have enough to build a second longhouse because we're going to be getting a lot of unit shipments and that is going to increase your population and you do not want to be pop capped. So that's another key consideration as well. So yeah, I'm just moving my explorer and what I'm doing here is I'm scouting. So it's always good the minute you start aging up is have a quick scout, see what, what your opponent's doing 
You know, are they, you know, mining gold? If they're mining gold, then they could potentially be looking to do a semi-fast fortress or a fast fortress. You know, if they're not, if they're building um, more military buildings, maybe further away from their base, then that might maybe that they want to play in age two more. Also look at their deck as well. And we can see we just aged up. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm building a longhouse there with the wood that I've got. And I've got a travoir that's going straight out into the middle of the map around here. And I'm using my explorer still to scout around. And look, this is this is key. Here we go. So I've spotted that we have two barracks here by the Spanish player. And he's built them pretty much in the middle of the map, more towards my side. And that is a key indicator of aggressive age two play. So we know now he's playing age two. He's not going to be uh, fast fortressing. He's going to be playing solely age two here. And um, let's see how this works out. And you can see that the second card that I'm getting from my TC is the Kenya Horseman. So that's the four Kenya Horseman card. The first card that I got was the three villager card in age one. And we're going for the four Kenya Horseman as a second pick. So he is a little bit ahead of me here. He he got his age up a little bit quicker than me because I was having to chop for a TP. And the four county horsemen are here. And what I suggest you do with this, guys, is I, I really suggest... I mean, you probably see that I do lose them a little quickly, a, a little bit quicker than you should. But you want to use the county horsemen to scout and to raid. But raiding doesn't mean just chucking them in and losing them. Really, really try and not lose the horsemen. You know, you want to use those horsemen for these skirmishes, for villagers, and you really don't want to get them sort of entangled in heavy infantry or pikemen or anything like that. And you don't want them to really take a lot of TC fire as well. So, you know, I know that's kind of easier said than done. You can see, you're going to see here that I actually struggle with it and it's something that I need to work on. But that's really what those four can your horsemen are for and you can see now that my, my third card this one is this situational now of course we're going for unit shipments now so we're going to be using all of our unit shipments until we have no more now the order in which you use those unit shipments all depends on the type of sieve that you're playing and what you can expect so because i'm playing against spanish and he's opened up in h2 normally you see some musk pressure so musketeers so that's why I've gone for the Aena first, because they are like a skirmish unit, a bow unit, light infantry that will counter the heavy infantry. But it all depends on what you're going against. And also you can go for the big button there. You saw that big button, the sickle, the big button on the uh, TC there. So for 500 food, you can get yourself five tomahawks. And I really recommend that you go for that as well. So make sure that you get your five tomahawks from your big button, Make sure that you get your four Kanya horsemen and then make sure that you start getting another unit shipment out the minute you get enough XP available. I know that I'm saying quite a lot here, but you can see that I've caught his villagers here and obviously he's got a nice pop of musks there that have meant that my Kanyas have, have really got to get out of there. And you can see that those five Tomahawks have popped now from the TC. That was a TC big button there. You can see that I'm harassing the Vils here. I've got three Canyon Horsemen left. And also just remember that you change your garrison location on your longhouse. Make sure that you have shipments coming from the from the war hut. Sorry, make sure you have shipments coming from the war hut and not from your TC because you don't want your military units to spawn at your TC and then have to walk all the way over the map. You know, we, we got to, this build is constantly pressurizing the enemy, containing them and making them fight and until they tap out basically and also you, you don't want to lose your war chief so you saw there that the musks were shooting at the war chief you do not want to lose him so make sure that he's safe you can see that he's providing an aura to those units and you see here we're going to get into a little bit of a pinch here but we do have some bows on the right side, so I am just going to back off a little bit because I know I can't win that. And the bowmen here are going to try and help. They've got some good range, picking off a couple of musketeers. Want to be careful of the Kanya, don't want to get them in there. So he has got quite a few units here, but we do have 
more tomahawks coming on the way just keep constantly training tomahawks i would suggest going tomahawks first and then using like the aena shipments um to help you with the bowmen tomahawks are a great sort of staple because they're really good at sieging units as well and you can see here i'm just really harassing him i've only got one one canyon horseman left so i haven't done a great job there but i do see a veal just there so i'm just going to start harassing even more and pressurizing that's what it's all about you can see here i'm just walking under tc this is a little bit risky i, I i've got to stop doing this but i suggest not to do this too much be be careful because what players can do is they can wait for you to come under the TC and then they can pop their town militia, you know, which are a very powerful unit. And they can, the town militia can come out, especially if, you know, if it's a European Civ, you can have the town militia and that will clear up a lot of your army. So just be very careful if you are deciding to venture through the enemy base, just be careful. You see here more tomahawks coming out i've got another tomahawk shipment on the way so just constant unit shipments make sure that your 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 eco is relatively balanced you can see here that you know i've got a good balance here 12 people on food five people on wood my population's okay 43 out of 55. i found another collection of villages it's just constantly circling your enemy base that's what you want to make sure you're doing constantly circling seeing if there's any villages that you can pick off you can see here I've I've picked off at another four or five. I've probably taken down about seven or eight villagers so far. And he's retreating back to his uh, racks. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take the opportunity and, and take down his TP. I'm just going to see if I can take down another villager there. I think I do. More Tomahawk units coming. Now he's popped cavalry. Now Tomahawks are good against cavalry. So it, it's not too bad that they've, um, that they've got cav here. So I... I really like to see that. I like it. I liked it when I saw that he had Huss and Musk because that is quite a good counter. Sorry, my unit composition, sorry, is a good counter against his. So. What you can do as well is sometimes you can be greedy and take a second uh, trade post in, uh, in transition from age one to age two, but that's more of an advanced thing. So I would suggest just making your TP between age one and age two. And you can see how I'm, I'm in a little spot, a spot of bother. The town militia has been called and um, yeah, I'm gonna lose quite a few units there, which is a shame. That was an error from me there. I, I sort of got caught out. So just be careful that you don't get cornered when you are rushing, that's one of the main things. And make sure that you also pressurize from different angles as well. You can see that I'm, I'm coming down from the north now. Um, and also you can see I was at the south there. So just try, if, you, if you've got the micro and if you've got the micro management that you can do it, do it, you know? It, it will really sort of disorientate your enemy and um, it will really make them want to quit, you know? So we're coming up to 10 minutes here of gameplay. And this is pretty much how much I'm gonna show you of, of, of the build order. You can see here that I've, I've pretty much used all of my unit shipments. And, um, you know, the next thing would probably be to either go for the five villager card or to go for the 800 resources. Because if your rush isn't successful, you need to think about getting into age three. You need to think about, you know, transitioning from the, the rush sort of stance and moving towards, you know, getting the economy to be able to get into age three. You can see here, I'm still pretty good. Like my hunts are pretty close to the TC. There are obviously a couple of hunts that I need to start luring in and that's what I start doing. And then I just start to push his double rack space here to stop him from getting any more troops. Make sure to do a little bit of micro there, moving the bowmen away from the horsemen and then just using the tomahawks to clear up the rest of the uh, musk. Nice little bit of micro. And more Tomahawks coming out, just constant, just keep with it. I've got a unit shipment there that I need to use, but I haven't used it yet, I haven't spotted it, so just make sure you keep your eye on the unit shipments. There we go, and I do believe I go for the five villagers, yeah. And I'm just uh, sieging the racks, and then I think that's pretty much GG right there. There you go. There you go, GG.
So that's pretty much it. That's just a run through and a, and a real life example there. I'm, I'm just above 1200 ELO. So, you know, if you're a beginner player, you're obviously going to be playing a bit lower than that. You'll start at 1000 ELO. You'll most likely drop because you'll be learning the game. But trust me, this sort of rush will be very powerful for beginner players and low ELO players. You'll be able to get higher up into the ladder. So, yeah, I suggest this sort of playthrough. But I'll just quickly show you very briefly, or just I'll quickly explain very briefly a sort of another sort of build that you can do, which is the Fast Fortress build, where you will build into Forest Prowlers and Musket Riders. Right, guys, I'm going to touch upon this very, very briefly. This is the FF sort of build that you want to do. So obviously, I just showcased to you the Age 2 rush that I really suggest you use as much as you can to try and understand how and how they're so powerful with their units and their pressure in age two but if you don't want to play age two and you want to wait and get into age three and use more powerful units and sort of perform a timing attack on your enemy then i'll quickly touch upon this so what you want to do is instead of aging up fast in age two you want to age up slower with either the chief or the wise woman. Now the chief will give you three villagers and one trevoir. I suggest that you use this tribal council pick because you're gonna want that trevoir to build a defensive war hut in your base. You're gonna need that war hut just in case there is any huge pressure um, when you're trying to macro um, for that age three age up, okay? And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is the you want to go for the five villager shipment first when you're in age two so that'll be your second shipment will be five villager your first obviously was the three villager second is five villager third will be the 800 uh, mixed crate and that will give you 200 gold um, and it will give you uh, 300 food and 300 wood so all you need to think about is try and macro for the 600 gold and try and macro for the uh, 900 food because that crate will give you the extra to be able to age up. So what you want to do is when you're getting into uh, the age two stage, you want to be chopping wood and you want to chop wood for the following buildings. You want to build your infrastructure up. You want to get a tribal marketplace so you can start getting gold. You want to get an extra longhouse for population so you don't get pop cats. And potentially if you want to, you can get a marketplace and you can research hunting dogs, okay? And that's pretty much it really. Once you have enough food and gold, get into age three and then you can build a corral. So once you get into age three, you'll get another trevoir. Make sure you pick the fast age up for age three. You'll get a trevoir and you can use that to build a corral. So then you'll have a stables and you'll have a war hut. And then you can start with the composition. You can start making jungle prowlers. You can start making um, the musket riders. And you kind of want to start going for quite a few unit shipments in H3. And I would suggest first picking the Kanya Horseman shipment because that can be very, very good for scouting and raiding. And it's kind of helpful to have a, uh, a hand cavalry unit to take down any artillery or, or skirmishes or anything like that. Okay. So that's pretty much it really just going to give you a very brief if you want any more idea of that i have done a video of uh the how called the experiencing the power of the ff that's a video that i did a few days ago or about a week ago now so if you do want to see that in action please feel free to check out that video um but that's pretty much it guys so i hope you enjoyed it so guys, I hope you really enjoyed this beginner's guide to the Haudenosaune or the Iroquois. If you guys found this video entertaining and useful and you want to take it onto the ladder, please do and let me know how you got on in the comments below. And of course, if you want more beginner guides, I've got four or five now on the channel. I've got one for Inca, the Brits, Dutch. I've got many, many, many guides. So I hope you guys really enjoy that and I hope you enjoyed this video. And of course, you can catch me streaming on Twitch at Widgie1. Take care, guys.